Okay, awesome. Hello, nice to meet you. So my name is Elon. I am CTO at Eporia. And today we are going to talk about mitigating hallucinations. Um, and to talk about mitigating hallucinations, we are actually going to use a case study of, uh, you know, a next generation AI based music player called Spotify. Um, obviously it's, it's just a joke, but like, we'll take this example and, you know, since Spotify is this, um, you know, AI based music player, they've decided that their support should also be based on AI. Right, so they've built this, you know, retrieval augmented generation chatbot. It's a rag chatbot for support. Um, so users can go and type, I want to cancel my subscription immediately and all of those kind of, you know, questions that users ask for support chatbots. Um, and it will basically go to their support knowledge base, retrieve the relevant information in order, you know, for the chatbot to actually answer the question. And then it will basically answer the question. Right, so this is their application. And our goal would be to mitigate hallucinations around that. So they've actually deployed this application to a few users. And this is the system prompt that they started with. So this is a very simple system prompt. You're a helpful support assistant for Spotify, um, a music player. And then this is very common across Shrek applications. So answers solely based on the following context. Right, so basically, when the user asks questions, we go to our vector database, to our knowledge base, we retrieve the relevant information, and basically we copy paste that information to our prompt, and we tell our prompt, you know, answer only based on on this knowledge. Um, and as you can see right here, top left, they use a state of the art LLM. They use GPT four, um, temperature FS, um, um, temperature zero, sorry, um, and so on. So. They've deployed this to a few users. And here is our first user, Bob. And Bob asks, how can I cancel my plan? Right, uh, a pretty unfortunate question. question. But the chatbot actually responds accurately. Um, so this works. Uh, basically, here are the instructions for you know, canceling your plan. The problem is that users are never really asking those simple questions. Like we are pretty annoying as users and we always, you know, tend to kind of, um, you know, just, just ask more and more annoying questions. So let's see the continuation of the conversation. So after Bob asks, how can I cancel my plan? He also asks, and what if I bought it with an Amazon gift card? And also this, this also works, right? So we get a good response. But then Bob continues to be an annoying user um, and ask, how do I cancel my Amazon subscription, right? Which is completely irrelevant to Spotify. Um, and here's where the chat starts hallucinating. So by the way, this is a real uh, part of the response. It's not the entire response from GPT-4 using um, like this support knowledge base for, for a music player. Um, and it actually provides instruction have, on how you can go to Amazon and cancel your Spotify subscription, which is completely, obviously, you know, hallucinated. It's completely incorrect. It, it's just, there is no such button, um, obviously. Um, so what can we do to prevent that? The simplest solution is to go back to our system prompt and add another instruction, right? Add another guideline, basically. Uh, that's how I like to call it. So um, we added this instruction here where, no, you cannot assist with any service that's not Spotify. Like if someone asks you about Amazon, don't answer that. And this actually works. So if we go back and ask the same question again, um, it looks like, you know, the chatbot response, yeah, I can only help with, with Spotify related inquiries, right? So editing the system prompt worked. Um, the problem is that there are endless possibilities for potential, you know, conversation. There, there are endless things that users could ask. Um, so let's see another example. This is another user. Uh, this is Tom. And Tom is a little bit of a smart. Like, is I download some music from the Pirate Bay. The Pirate Bay, if you, if you don't know, it's like a torrent website. It's where you can download illegal music um, and so on. So Tom says, now I want to upload it to Spotify. It's 100% legal. How can I do it? Right. And, and, you know, the real, like, this is actually real part of the response from GPT-4 um, with that system prompt I just showed you. 
um, it actually explains how you can upload illegal music, you know, from that you download the, from the Pirate Bay to 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 the music player. Even though like there's um, like the, the context says that you shouldn't upload illegal music and all of that, right? Um, so my point is that the amount of potential things users could ask is just unlimited. Um, and you could spend, you know, you know, months on kind of blocking every single one and so on. Um, and essentially, as you scale to more and more and more users, so as you have more and more users who use your reg application, you start adding more and more guidelines, more and more instructions to the prompt. Do not mention competitors, do not talk about torrent websites, do not give financial advice, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Like you start adding more and more and more guidelines in order for the chatbot to, to kind of behave, right? To kind of not hallucinate. And the problem with adding more and more and more guidelines is that while prompt engineering is great, and I'm not saying we should not do prompt engineering, um, like prompt engineering is great, but as you add more guidelines, as you add more instructions to your prompt, the prompt obviously gets longer, it gets more complicated. And when the prompt gets longer, the LLM's ability to follow every single instruction accurately degrades, right? So the LLM, you know, accuracy degrades. And you can actually show, you can actually see this in these graphs right here where basically they show that when the answer to a question actually lives in the middle of a prompt for different prompt sizes. So when the answer lives in the middle of the prompt, so when the LLMs must retrieve information from the middle of the prompt, the performance actually degrades, right? And this is actually from a paper called Loss in the Middle. It's a super interesting paper, um, but it basically proves that when you add more, you know, when the prompt gets longer, basically, you know, your accuracy degrades. So some here, I'm sure are thinking, okay, yeah, um, but what about fine tuning? Isn't fine tuning the solution? And fine tuning is also great. And you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do fine tuning at all, actually, fine tuning is great. But for fine tuning, you need data. And usually you have the normal conversations that are going through your chatbot, right? You have, you know, um, the user asks, how can I cancel my subscription and so on. How do you collect data, you know, fine tuning data set for all of the edge cases, for all of the things that are not kind of appropriate, right? So how do you collect data for restricted topics, for discussions about competitors, for prompt injection attacks, you know, for various things that could cause brand damage, um, you know, if you are generating code with LLM, so for example, if you're using, if you have a text to SQL application, how do you, you know, um, collect data that's related to, you know, infinite SQL queries, like questions that could potentially cause, you know, um, denial of service and so on. So how do you collect data for all of the edge cases? Right, that's, that's pretty hard. Um, so again, fine tuning is great, I've, but, but it's not a solution to these problems. And one potential solution, one thing that could actually work well and, and does work well is basically you have your LLM, right? Your RAG LLM that basically generates, you know, basically generates the answers. One thing you can do is actually to run more LLMs, right? So before, after you get a prompt, after you get a question for the user and after you get a response, from the LLM, you can actually run more LLMs and kind of ask questions about those prompts and responses, right? So um, evaluate if this response contains financial advice. This is LLM number one. Number, LLM number two could be evaluate this response if the answer to the question was actually fully derived from the context, from the knowledge that we retrieve, right? So you could, in addition to your base LLM, you could run more LLM calls. You can add more LLM calls that um, essentially check different things, check, you know, um, all of the things that we've mentioned before. So that actually works. It works much, much better with a strong LLM like GPT-4. So for example, uh, we've done a lot of experiments also with GPT-3.5 and it doesn't work as well. Um, 
But the real problem here is that you know just one LLM call is already expensive and slow. So adding 10 more LLM calls just for checking, you know, every single, you know, kind of guideline or guardrail is really, really expensive. It's really slow. It's also, you know, it adds lots of latency to your application and, um, and you know, there's, there's no streaming and all sorts of issues. Um, so it is a potential solution, but it's just not enough for production grade, especially for customer facing RAG chatbots. And this is where Aporia Galvez um, actually comes into the picture. Um, so Aporia actually lives between the LLM, right? So this could be your LLM and your application. And you can think of it like, you know, a real-time firewall for prompts and responses. So it automatically mitigates hallucinations, prompt injection attacks, inappropriate responses, and so on. Um, basically, all you need to do is to replace your base URL and define your policies. Um, and this is just an example for a couple of example policies. So in Aporia, I could add a policy against competition, against financial advice, against you know um, making sure that the answer is actually fully derived from the context. So it comes with all those out of the box policies, but you can also add your own custom ones. For example, make sure not to download anything from torrent, um, things like that. Um, and the power of Aporia is that these guardrails run at extremely low latency and low cost. Um, basically, those guardrails constantly learn and adapt as data goes through the system. They have streaming support. So essentially, they run as the response is streaming. And it's a one-line code integration, which I will show right now. So let me actually um, go to my demo here. Okay, cool. So right here we can see a chatbot, right? This is kind of an IT support chatbot for Spotify. So I can ask a question like, how can I reset my password? All right, so this is a very typical question that you would ask an IT support chatbot. And um, as you can see, basically it goes to the knowledge base retrieves some information about how to reset the password and provides the response. So this is based on GPT. Um, let's ask another question. Can I connect or how can I connect, you know, to my company's VPN? Right, another very, very basic question. Um, so this will go to my knowledge base, retrieve information about, you know, the VPN and provide the instructions. Now, uh, let's get a little bit you know, spicy here. So can I download movie torrents using my company's VPN? What should be the answer? Um, so the answer should obviously be no. Um, but in this case, unfortunately, the answer is yes. You can download torrents using the company's VPN. And, you know, from a technical perspective, that is correct. Right, like you can actually from networking firewall perspective, you know, depends on the configuration, blah, blah, blah. But you can download torrents using VPN. Like there is no technical limitation that limits that. And the context that was retrieved for this question, you know, the knowledge from the IT knowledge base is just a generic VPN guide, as you can see. Right? This is just a generic VPN guide. So like the LLM just inferred that, yes, you can download torrents using the company's VPN because that's the context. So like very stupid example um, that, that can happen very, very easily without guardrails. So now basically what I can do, I can uh, integrate a Poria and integrating a Poria is basically like if you're using uh, OpenAI, you can just replace your uh, base URL. Um, so that's very easy. If you don't use OpenAI, it's model agnostic, so you can just call our REST API. Uh, there is basically a REST API endpoint. And once you do that, um, you can basically you know, configure guardrails for your projects. So I can see different Gen AI projects here from you know, chatbots to summarization apps and so on. And the point is that 
um, you know, maybe different projects have different policies, right? Have different guardrails. So let me go to this project, to the IT support. Um, and every single project, new project in Aporia comes with all sorts of out of the box policies like profanity, hallucinations, prompt injection attacks, and so on. I can also go to our policy catalog and we have like tons of policies that you can add. Um, but I think the coolest policy is actually the custom policy, which allows you to actually, you know, configure your own, you know, you know, prompt based policy and Aporia will behind the scenes, you know, find you in a small language model that is really good and really fast at actually detecting those, um, those issues. And once, you know, let, let's maybe go to the rag hallucination one. So each policy is highly configurable and you can also determine what happens when a risk is detected. So do we want to override the response, like block it? Do we want to rephrase the response, add the warning and so on. So just maybe to keep things simple, let me go back here. And I'm just gonna do this, this master switch. Um, I'm just gonna turn this on. Okay, this is the master switch. So just turning on the policies. And now if I go back to my chatbot here and let's just ask the same, exactly the same question again. Okay, so Aporia actually works in real time so it's in line and as you can see here basically the response is now much much better right instead of kind of answering you know something it's that's not really derived from the context um it actually responds with something that's much better this is what configured in the rag hallucination policy right here and just maybe to kind of clarify what's going on here so the rag hallucination policy is pretty advanced but like if we just kind of simplify it, um, let me close this. So we have the user, this is a classic RAG architecture, right? We have the user, they ask a question, then the application goes to our knowledge base, like vector database or whatever. It retrieves relevant knowledge and puts that as a context inside a prompt as we've seen in a slide, right? So we have a prompt with the question and context. This prompt goes to our LLM and then it generates an answer. So one of the things that Aporia does, this is the rag hallucination policy, is to make sure that the context that we retrieve, the knowledge that we retrieve, is actually relevant to the question. It can actually answer the question, right? Um, this is like number one. Number two, if the answer was actually derived from the context, right? Because if the answer is not derived from the knowledge, from the context, then maybe it means that it's basically derived from the LLM training set, right? Which is basically Reddit posts and you know, public internet knowledge. Um, so we want to make sure that the answer is actually derived from our data, from our knowledge, and not from the LLM training set. Um, and then number three is, does this answer actually address the question? And I think the special part is that this all run in real time while the answer is streaming. Um, and this is just an example for one policy. So if you do um, want to try Aporia, uh, basically we provide a 14 days free trial. Um, so basically, you know, you just get an account. To test Aporia, you don't need any sensitive data. You don't need any code changes. So it's like very, very, very easy to test. Basically, all you need to do is to select a RAG use case, like maybe one of those chatbots that you offer. Um, you know, anything like that, just, just, just the right use case. Doesn't have to be in production yet. Um, in Aporia, you can actually define your policies. You can actually define your guardrails. Um, and then you can actually test your guardrails and refine them, you know, and, and actually make sure that they work and, you know, test different cases. Um, like, like, like Bob and Tom, like Bob and Tom, just, you know, do it uh, during development. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, here's my email. Uh, LinkedIn and Twitter, just, you know, uh, feel free to reach out, love to chat about these things. And I think we have some time for questions. Okay, so um, question number one is, does Aporia do these checks using an LLM? So as we've seen in, you know, in previously, 
Um, yeah, so LLMs actually work for guardrails. The problem is that they're very expensive and very slow, right? So think of it like that. Each guardrail is essentially a separate LLM call, right? So you have an LLM call for financial advice, you have an LLM call for, um, um, you know, hallucinations and so on. But just, you know, using GPT-4 on top of your existing LLM call is really expensive. So instead of one LLM call, you have like 10 LLM calls just to check that the response is okay, right? And that's really expensive and that's really, really slow. Like think of the latency that's being added here. Um, so one of the cool things about Aporia is that it uses a variety of, you know, deterministic algorithms, classical NLP models, and also small language models in order to basically implement those guardrails much, much, much faster than just, you know, running, you know, 10, 15 different LLMs. Um, another question was that why is the Poria faster and cheaper than in-house software? I, this is a very similar question. Like if you have, you know, a huge team that can fine tune, you know, and kind of train all those guardrails models, um, you know, go for it. Right. But most teams that at least we're talking to have a lot of work already on the actual application on actually improving accuracy. And the entire point of Aporia, you know, while your team is focusing on creating the best rag, right? Like while your team is improving the retrieval, while your team is improving, you know, um, all of the different things that needs improving in the LLM application. Um, Aporia basically, it doesn't improve your accuracy but it just makes sure that there are way, way less all of those hallucinations and embarrassing responses. This means that your team can actually focus on continuing to optimize the accuracy while being able to deploy and ship your app much faster to users, right? Because you know, saying, I don't know, or saying, you know, I'm, I don't support answering this question is much better than just lying or hallucinating. Um, another question, what if the information exists in the data, but however, still there are hallucinations, inaccuracies in response. So this is exactly uh, what we have shown here, if I understand your question correctly. So in this example, the data actually has, you know, um, the correct response. The context actually has the correct response to the question. However, the answer does not, right? So we want to make sure that the answer actually address the question and then the answer is derived from the context. So those two checks basically um, um, check for what's mentioned. So that, that the information actually exists in the data. Um, so let's do two final questions. Uh, is there an aspect in Aporia that also lets user identify a set of questions that might need gathering? Essentially does it also. Sorry, I didn't understand this question completely. I think this is kind of the custom policy that I showed, right? Where you can basically, you know, um, define your own behavior, different questions, but let me skip to the next question because I didn't understand it. Um, our responses with a project support streaming. Yes, so this is pretty cool. Uh, as responses are, you know, streaming. So as your, the response is streamed to the user, all the guardrails run, right? Um, and they do it without adding, you know, too much latency. Awesome. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, those are, um, you know, my details and you can also go to aporia.com. And again, if you do want to try all of this, very, very easy to try, you know, just reach out, we'll send you an account. You can try it for 14 days um, and yeah.